Hello everybody and welcome to Azumi Game Game Dev Dev Log Week 2. This is the second week of weekly development updates. We have a new background because uh, I switched to Windows 10 and my license doesn't work. So I gotta call Microsoft tomorrow because I'm, I'm, my Windows copy isn't activated, so I can't change my background to Alien Queen. So I'm stuck with this default bullshit. But uh, it's not gonna stop us. We're gonna we're gonna keep working along anyway. So just imagine Mina Ishido there having a good old time, because uh, that's what should be there. So I started keeping an actual uh, a change log this week, so I can tell you exactly all the new things that have been added. Uh, for the most part. I started doing this a couple days ago. So the first half of the week, there are minor little changes. I do bug fixes constantly all week, just as I find them. And like, super menial, uh, super menial things like changing values here and there. And, uh, you know, making things go faster or slower. Things that really don't even need to be mentioned. They're just quality of life things on such a minor level that add up to a smoother gaming experience. But, uh... I don't think I'd even put those in the change log if I did, but I have some new features and some bug fixes. So let's jump in and we can discuss them right now. So the biggest bug fix is the bug that has been plaguing this setup from day one, back in the, fir on the 1st of October when I got everything set up, was a flip sprite error. So if anybody who's played the game knows, probably, that when you were playing before, if you held left and it zoomed was going left and then you held down right, the right key as well, uh, she would flip even though we are going the wrong direction. She started moonwalking and shit. And I didn't know how to fix that. They had a demo platformer project on here. So I just opened it up and said, I'm just going to copy what they did. It doesn't happen here. So if you go into game events, all I had to do was change keyboard from is pressed to is down and add the second condition, the other key is not down. Uh, I had tried this setup before, but I didn't change from is down to is pressed, and it still didn't work. So I was like, oh, I guess I did it wrong. But uh, no, they both need to be an is down condition and not an is pressed, because those are two technically two different states of the keyboard. So it's finally done. It's finally fixed. Uh, there's no weird flipping when you're sliding down the wall or running back and forth. It's just it's exactly as it should be. That's the first bug fix. Uh, there's another minor bug fix uh, with the, the big uh, brute ogre enemies. Uh, they, were, they were on a timer initially. Uh, every 10 seconds that they weren't on, that there wasn't one in existence, uh, one would pop up to kind of just uh, give you some breathing room after you kill one. The problem was this was tied to the system time, like the game time, how long the game was running. So let's say it would go in increments of 10. Every 10 seconds the game has been played, another will spawn. Uh, this is fine until you realize if you kill one at nine and a half seconds before the animation is done another one will immediately pop in so there'd be an error where like it looks like one just immediately spawns in after it's done uh because this trick the system wouldn't trigger 10 seconds after it was killed it'd just be every 10 seconds the game's been running so there'd be instances where they'd be fucked up so i picked this so it's running on a timer its own independent timer uh, that isn't tied to the game time. It's its own timer that triggers once this one dies and another one will come in. So you'll never get caught off guard like that and have a new enemy instantly pop up in your face. Uh, it's also set that uh, the timer won't start until the spawn point, which is this thing right here that's invisible in the actual game, uh, is off screen. So you can't just stand there and wait for him and it'll just pop into existence. The timer will start once that's off screen. So that's another trigger. So it just kind of makes it smoother because right now none of these enemies have like spawn animations. They just kind of pop into existence. So I've kind of fudged around that until I do a proper animation of just like most of them spawn off screen. So uh, they'll be there by the time you come back. And this also forces you to move around the arena a little bit more. So one of the things I tried to do from the beginning is uh, keep, force you to keep moving. And and because like there's a flow of like, you know, turrets will pop up and then the big guys will be down there and the slimes will be down there and then the flyers will be going back and forth but you could technically stay in one corner if everything just spawned indefinitely and kill all 50 guys but uh by having things spawn only when they're off screen it kind of keeps you moving and uh lets you explore the movement mechanics and like experiment with the dash and stuff which i think is like the funnest part of the game uh the other bug fix this is another minor one 
is that when you were wall jumping, if you jumped onto a wall and then jumped again, it would play the jump sound effect twice, like over each other, like a little, like a little, like, like the bloop it would be two bloops, like right on top of each other. It would sound weird for the first one. And that's because for some reason, uh, I have double jump enabled on the platform behavior. And even though I wasn't in the normal state, uh, it would still consider that second jump off the wall a double jump. So I just change it so that now in the code, when you're in the wall state, double jump is disabled. So it doesn't play that bug, that does sound effect twice. Uh, again, a minor bug, but it was something that's been <laughs> bugging me uh, ever since I added the wall jump and added the sound effect in. I didn't know how to fix it, but I was like, oh. I figured out, I just did some testing, I'm like, oh, it's a, it's the double jump that's triggering it. Because I thought the sound effects in the code, quote unquote code, are just to play, like all the states are separated. So in the, the wall state, uh, I was wondering why, and I still don't really 100% get it, because like the the double jump, I guess because it's a behavior that's like universal. So there's a double jump always, no matter what state you're in, because uh, there's a platform behavior affects the object and not the state. But um, you would think like the command to play the sound in the air state, which is like when you're jumping, wouldn't also play when you're on the wall, but it did for some weird reason. So I just have it disable double jump uh, and once you go back into default state, which is like the pass through for all these other states, double jumps are enabled again. So it's an easy transition that isn't noticed by the player. So that's the bug fixes for this week. Um, in terms of new features, I think probably the most obvious that you've probably already kind of noticed is I replaced those ugly health bars with uh, universal, like because they, they would change depending on what browser you're playing. So they're just browser default uh, progress bars. But I made actual graphics now uh, that track your health and your dodge. And uh, these are a little misplaced here because for some reason they're not aligning properly. So I had to like tweak the position here, but they line up in game. Uh, I'll look into that eventually. I just have a little portrait of Azumi. I might have it animate when you get hit or something later, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, so I think they just look a little bit nicer. They look more 16 bit, quote unquote. Um, and they match the style of the game better. Another thing is I re-added back in the crouch state. I pulled that out because there were some issues with like crouching and dodging were causing that float bug. Now the float bug's been pretty much patched and taken care of, knock on air. Uh, I put it back in. And there's also a new feature now that if you're on, I can actually show, well, there's be music, so I can't really show you. That's why I haven't just been playing this stuff. Um, if you jump on the jump through platforms, you can now hold down and jump and you'll pass through them. There's no animation for it yet triggering an animation for it's kind of tricky but uh yeah you will you can jump down through jump up to platforms which kind of just seems like platforming and platformer 101 kind of stuff the last thing is that i have some new music from slamron he made a new some new tunes so i added them in um anybody can send music if they want to like none of the music's final like no offense to slamron it stuff's great and i might end up using it but um I was going to tie into a point I'm about to make in a second, but we can actually preview the project. Another thing I added that's actually new is you'll see in a second, um, I added in the I Am Games logo, because like the I Am Games is kind of like the parent thing of Namco Bandai, and now they Namco Bandai has a fade in and a fade out to make it look a little bit nicer than just popping in and out. Uh, the rest of this is the same for now. No sound effects added yet. Let's see, a little bit of a different song here. No, it's Turn that down. I am so sorry. I had to reinstall all the software because now I'm on uh, Windows 10. <laughs> so not all the settings are proper. But uh, we can start this. We got a new uh, new battle music too. You can see the HP bars in action and everything. Maybe pass through that. Again, it doesn't look great. Gotta get the animation working better. But it's there. And just, I mean, you can't see my keyboard, but like I'm pressing back and forth and nothing happens with that flip. It just stays the proper direction. So there's really, we'll close out of this. There's really no major bugs that I'm aware of anymore. Like there's still way more development to go. So I'm sure as I add more logic, there will be more bugs coming up. But as of right now, uh, again, all the major bugs I've been aware of since the initial patron launch have been fixed with that flip sprite issue. 
which is pretty exciting. Like it's a pretty smooth playthrough now. So of course, uh, there will be a direct download in the uh, Patreon Discord, as well as a link to updated link on ZeroNet if you want to play this new build. And uh, yeah, that's it for the game. But uh, there was one other thing I want to talk about, and that's a design philosophy I had an idea for that I talked about actually on Market How Do, the podcast I do with my friend Matt on Fridays, uh, that I talked about on there. Didn't get a whole lot of feedback, but I was figured I'd bring it up here as well. As I've mentioned before, and I don't, I don't know, I think I've mentioned this. I don't know if I mentioned it on the procrastinators or on these devlogs in the past. Azumi has been a creative 180 for me, and it was very intentional. Back before, I mean, I've been making stories and projects and trying to do art and stories and all that kind of crazy stuff for like fucking 15 years, and none of them have ever worked out. And they've always followed the same kind of uh, general idea of being big, large projects in scope with big cast of characters, unique lore, and a spiraling crazy storyline. And the reason I did that is because I, those are the kind of stories I love. Um, you know, like the big shonen battle mangas that have crazy characters and all sorts of crazy adventures and like uh, really deep, interesting world building and like things to talk about like philosophy and politics and, and crap like that. Like really deep fantasy worlds. Something I've always been interested in. Sorceress Lost, if anybody ever w looked at the little bit I did of that back in 2015, uh, was the beginning of a grand adventure and had lots of world building and like different continents and different kinds of governments and, and a big magic system and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but these projects would inevitably sputter out and fail and I'd never get past the first couple things either because I get uncomfortable with my level of skill and want to redo everything or I just get stuck trying to figure out where the project would go from there. So it would just, they would never materialize. And it just got to the point where I was like, Jesus Christ, I've done like six or seven different stories like this and I've never materialized. So like, when have I hit the definition of insanity? It's time to try something new. So I had come up with this character Azumi because I was in a uh, Discord group doing like weekly uh, uh, work meetings, kind of making sure we all stayed on progress, like a, an accountability group, I suppose. And they were all working on games and they kind of were like, dude, you should make a game. And I was like, I don't really, because like I was just big in Sorcerer's Lost mode still until earlier this year, uh, around April or May. And I was just like, Sorcerer's Lost would make a terrible game. Uh, like, I don't want to make it a game. It wouldn't make sense. Uh, it would have to be some, like, RPG. I'm not really big into turn-based RPGs, and I don't want to make an action RPG. Uh, I just, Sorcerer's Lost is all about this grand story and, like, this character development. Like, I could do that with an RPG, but all the gameplay just wouldn't serve the story. Just be slowing it down and bogging it down. I had no, oh, no real interest in doing that. Uh, I just would want to tell a non-interactive story. It would be less work. And I could focus more on the part that I actually was caring about, which is the characterization of the story. So, dumb idea. Uh, shot it down. But it planted a seed in my head of, like, if I was going to make a game from the ground up, what would it be? And that kind of started the idea of Izumi. And... I pulled a lot of inspiration from her from like the old PlayStation 2 kind of mascot characters like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro and Sly Cooper and you know Jack and Daxter and some of the later kind of 2000s edge that they got like in Jack 2 and Ratchet Deadlock and things like that um, combined with the idea of uh, the kind of edgy Newgrounds animations from the, the early early 2000s things like Xiao Xiao and Madness Interactive and things like that. So it kind of all coalesced into this character. And uh, it was different because when I came up with the character, I was thinking more gameplay, so the character is very flat. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of backstory. I don't know much about Izumi as a character. Uh, she just does cool shit. Uh, kind of like, you know, uh, a Xiao Xiao, if you ever watch Xiao Xiao. Like, you don't know anything about that stick figure character. He just is a badass and does badass shit. And Izumi is kind of the same way. A um, little bit more developed, but... In the same vein, much more on that side of the spectrum than something like Sarah, where I had entire like backstories and histories and childhoods and, and all this stuff fleshed out. And uh, the world building of Azumi is completely stream of consciousness. It's like rule of cool all the way down. Anything I think is cool, I'm just throwing it in. I don't care about cohesion or logic. It eventually, like that idea was a springboard of me saying for Azumi as a project, I want her to be purposely opposite everything I've attempted to do before because none of it worked. So let's just go in the complete opposite direction instead of like looking at the shonen battle manga and the deep kind of like comic books and stuff that I take inspiration from. Let's take inspiration from another source. Uh, these these like early 2000s mascot characters and Newgrounds, which was light on plot, 
uh, and more heavy on style that I still like. And let's see what happens with that. And it's been very creatively freeing. Uh, and the projects, like, I don't feel as pressured because there's not as much to do in terms of like having to build entire like lore and plan out really complicated and difficult things. Like with this game, I can just focus on making a functional game and creating the art assets and like in terms of like tying everything together like why is there a skull uh with a little slime thing inside of it why is there a big ogre why is there a little flying mosquito monster i, I don't know they're just there there's designs like i don't have to think about that part um and that's been different but easier and arguably more effective uh so the reason i bring this all up is that this next idea is something also very opposite of what i've done my entire creative career the big artist that got me inspired to start making things online and being an independent content creator was a guy named M. Strange. if you follow me for any amount of time you've probably heard me name drop him before and he's a one-man show he does everything by himself and takes pride in being a solo dude he made three animated feature films by himself made tons of previous shorts before that uh working on a big huge platformer game all by himself like he's a solo dude I took huge inspiration from that. I love the idea of being a one-man band. I love having the control. But look where it's gotten me. So, interesting thing. This guy right here, I did not design him. Uh, one of my friends, Ashley, she designed the enemy for me. And then I took it, I reinterpreted it, I made the 3D model based on her concept art that she gave me because I needed an enemy and I didn't have an idea, and I only had a few days left. Uh, there's another couple of enemies uh, that my other friend, my artist friend, Carpet Shark, which you can find on Tumblr, her art's great. Uh, they did an, an, an enemy designs for me as well. And there's another one that I think is really cool. I think I showed the concept art for it. It's like that black silhouette cat sort of thing. Uh, that might be a mini boss at some point in the finest, final game. Uh, so I didn't come up with those designs. I took them and made them mine, but I got two cool enemy designs that I wouldn't have had otherwise. You know, I designed Little Flyer Guy, I designed the slime, and I would say, and I designed the skull turret. Uh, so, like, those are the designs I came up with, but then I had help externally to do other things. That made things easier. That, that help allowed me to get the deadline on time, get that November 8th product shipped, because I would have taken way longer coming up with enemies, or I would have done really shitty ones that didn't look as good. And something I've been thinking about in terms of the internet is that we now have this like culture where the back and forth, the interconnectedness and like the uh, fan, I don't want to say fan, but like audience participation is almost expected to a degree. So my idea was that maybe this should be another area where I purposely try and do the opposite of what I've done before and run with the idea of crowdsourcing lots of things with the game. Like I'm already crowdsourcing the, the audio. Like I have all these music tracks uh, from Slamron and I didn't even ask. He just bombed into my DMs like, yo dude, I wanna do music. Like, uh, you wanna have it sound like Sega? Like, here you go. And he just keeps sending me tracks. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, uh, I, I, if I didn't pay my fucking credit card bill, I have no money right now. I, I PayPal you something. Like you're making me all the shit. Uh, and I don't, I don't agree with giving people to taking stuff for free, you know, but, um, crowdsourcing, that's something I've never been comfortable with from a pride standpoint, because my huge artistic inspiration and my, like my, my guy, my like self proclaimed mentor, that guy who inspired me to make art online the way that I do now, doesn't do anything with other people. You know, he has voice actors and a little bit of music help, but he knows how to make music and does music for all of himself. He does all the animation, all the design, everything. And so I took that at a very formative time in my life and I was like, that's what I want to be. And I've always done that. And that's probably another part of my failures is that I'm not M. Strange. I am me. And I do not have his skill sets. I have my skill sets. And... Well, M.Dot kind of just drops off the map, does his shit, and then every now and then pops back and releases something, I'm not 
great at it, but I do think I'm good at talking to people and I know people. And like, I have a small, tiny community of people who are already have, have expressed interest in helping me without me even asking, but maybe it will behoove me to try and actively fight against this long-standing issue I've had and extend the offer for people to help. Have the game have a big crowdsourced element. And what I want to do with that is that I want to make sure designs that aren't mine are credited in game. So I think, I don't know, I'm not sure how to implement it yet. I'm actually, there's a lot of like animation stuff that I have ideas for doing, but I haven't implemented them yet because uh, Construct has like a rolling sort of release. They just release updates constantly, but they're all beta updates. Like the stable update comes later. There's already like motion tween effects and stuff in like the beta versions, but they're not as stable. So I haven't adopted them yet, but once they're out, I'm gonna put tweens everywhere because it'll be so much easier to animate stuff than the way you have to do it now. It's kind of annoying. But the reason I say that is like, when this guy first pops up and you see him, I want to have a little thing that pops up and says like, oh, uh, this guy was created by this artist and have a little thing. And then every time the level starts, I want to have the title of the track that's playing pop up in the corner and say, title of the track by Slamron. And like it hot links to his Twitter or something, it, you know? And like when we fight that mini boss that Carpet Shark did, I want it to like pop up. Like this enemy was designed by Carpet Shark. Like, like, like my gut tells me no 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 no. you can't even use those things like you got to do everything yourself you have to be the genius that that is able to like sit in a corner and produce a masterpiece but things are getting done better working with other people i never would able to make these really cool mega drive sounding songs if slammer hadn't like extended the invitation and been like hey dude i got you and like now i have cool music and like maybe I'll get more music. I don't. I don't fucking know. Uh, but like maybe I'll hold contests to design bosses, and then like the boss will be something that someone came up with. And like I don't want to directly take people's assets and just drop them in because I think the game will lose visual cohesion that way. But like I'll take like I did with Ashley, right here. I'll take your design if it's cool, and then I'll reinterpret it in my art style and make an asset of it. So and I'll credit you with the initial design. And, uh, you know, if I ever make this a paid product, you'll get paid for the designs that are in the game. I mean, I can't, I don't know what that would entail yet because like, A, this is a free game. I don't, I'm not making a dime off of it. Um, it's going to be a release for free on, on the web. Uh, but the final game might not, maybe the final game would be like a $10 thing on cartridge or something like that. I don't fucking know. Like it really depends on how the game turns out. This is my first game, but I've actively resisted against working with people for years. I did I did try and start like a small comic imprint in college with a couple people and nobody pulled their weight, nobody gave a shit. I did all the work and they eventually dropped out, abandoned me, and I put all this time and effort into buying domains, making websites, making assets and resources for their projects on top of my own and got nothing for it but uh, stabs in the back. So ever since then, I've been very anti working with anybody because I just don't trust them. Uh, but I think this way it's crowdsourced. It's not like a long term collaboration. It's just like, uh, here, dude, uh, here's a cool thing that I thought would fit in the game. Or like maybe someone can come up with a name for Izumi's Talking Sore because I still don't have a name for him and I'm shit at coming up with names. Maybe someone can look at him and be like, that's a cool, that's a cool character. I think you should be called this and maybe it'll resonate or maybe it'll trigger something in my mind. I'm like, Oh, what if I just move a few letters right now? It says this, that's good. That sounds great. You know, uh, I don't know. Like I've never done this before, but in a controlled environment with people that I were already my friends, I got a couple great character designs out of it and I got my deadline faster and I got music I could never make on my own. So, uh, yeah, might be worth trying. Worst comes to worst, I just go back to being a fucking recluse and do everything myself. Uh, but best case scenario, I have tons of new ideas that I would never have gotten by myself. And uh, I'll make sure that everybody gets their due one way or the other. So that's it. That's it for this update this week. Uh, the big thing for next week is I have to get this fucking level done. 
uh, I'm tired of looking at a green void. And I think it's starting to hurt the marketing of the game. Because every time, when I started, and I posted, like, GIFs and stuff, people ate it up. Like, whoa, it's cool, it's a fucking game. Uh, nobody cares anymore, because I'll make an update, and it just looks exactly the same. Like, this level has been basically the same for uh, a month and a half, almost two months now. Like, there's been tons of under-the-hood changes and mechanics added, but visually, it looks the same. Nobody cares anymore. I barely care anymore. So... Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to add cutscenes, like little like intro cutscenes, like when you come into this room, like the doors lock, and that's when you're trapped and stuff. But I can't do that until I have the actual assets to make those cutscenes work. So I'm kind of at a standstill at this point. Until this level is made, I can't really do much more. So it has to happen. So that's going to be the bulk of development this upcoming week is just making the final level design and tile set and tile atlas for this level. It'll be a big, it'll be big to do, but uh, I'm hopeful that uh, it'll be good. So that's, that's what I got. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next week.